today we're going to be looking at the conservation of momentum and how it changes in relativity. Well, you usually think of momentum as conserved and absolute. I would add a gamma here. Because gamma uh, shows that when time is dilated or contracted, so is velocity. And the factor that time is dilated by or contracted by. And that uh, shows how velocity is stretched or compressed. One teeny kilo object send it flying at a velocity of maybe 84% uh, of C. You'll see why that number helps us later. And then we have this, which is going to be gamma, which can be expanded. So that gamma will be expanded into one over square root of one minus V over C squared. Now, from what I believe, that's gonna be equal to one minus uh, 0.84, which is going to be equal to 1 over square root of 0.16, which is obviously going to be 1 over 0.4 or 25. That gives us a gamma of 25. But now we have to multiply it by the rest of the equation, 20 times 0.84c. Well, this is pretty awkward, but we can make it less awkward. By make, um, multiplying this by this, we get 500 times 0.84c, giving us 84c, uh, 84c times 1 for 5 is equal to 420c. Now, that's obviously really high. But what happened if we used the original equation on this kind of velocity? Well, it obviously wouldn't work out. We would get different results that aren't representative of the actual answer. See this? Look at this. 20 times 0.84c. That's way smaller than our original answer and not how it's supposed to be when you're at going at such large speeds. So that only gives you 16.8c which is significantly smaller than this beauty that we have conceived right here. Thus, that gives us a certain kind of graph. Oh, well, when you're looking at the regular equation, it's obviously linear. It's the simplest kind of graph you could ever uh, encounter in your life. When your velocity increases, so, so that you're in momentum. And the same says with mass. Now, when your mass increases and your velocity stays the same, we go on the same kind of loop. Gamma is set to what? However, something very strange happens. Seemingly linear at first, but as your velocity approached V, slowly it got outrageously high and soon curved to the highest it could be breaking the charge. So, the limit is reached when you uh, get, uh, try to get close to the, when you get uh, as close as you can to the ultimate speed, the speed of light. One more insight, this actually just reduces to the original equation when you uh, set uh, to your velocity to ordinary speed, which is unfortunate.